As you may already know, ATSC 1.0 can use different video codecs to improve video quality or to even broadcast in 4K. The reason why this is possible is because video coding is simply made up of code. If this wasn't already obvious, modulation techniques that are meant to send binary information, like ATSC 1.0's 8VSB, can send whatever binary information you want. ATSC 1.0 is simply a vessel to send 19.39 megabits per second. Those 19.39 megabits per second can be made up of whatever code you want. In fact, as far as I'm aware, I was the first YouTube channel to mention this. I brought this up in a video all the way back in November of 2023. If you didn't already know, ATSC 1.0 primarily uses H.262 or MPEG-2 Part 2 for video, which is an incredibly inefficient codec that came out in 1996. Compound this with the fact that ATSC 1.0 can only fit 19.39 megabits per second, and the video capabilities are incredibly limited while using MPEG-2 video. The good thing is, ATSC 1.0 isn't locked to just sending MPEG-2 video. At the end of the day, ATSC 1.0 is just sending ones and zeros. These ones and zeros can be made up of literally any video codec. K03IMD, an ATSC 1.0 station in Eugene, Oregon, is sending three 4K HEVC channels, one 1080p AVC channel, one MPEG-2 480p channel, and one MPEG-2 1080p channel. Again, this is an ATSC 1.0 station, but there's a catch. The broadcaster needs equipment to send the codec, and the consumer on the receiving end needs equipment to decode the codec. Devices like the HD Home Run are the most future-proof because they don't decode any video or audio. HD Home Run simply tune the ATSC 1.0 or ATSC 3.0 waveform and extract binary code from it. It then sends the code to a client device, so it's up to the client or client app to be able to decode a given codec. That's why in VLC, Dolby AC4 audio won't play from ATSC 3.0 stations, but other apps like channels for HD Home Run will. Not only would I be able to watch the HEVC video from K03IMD using an HD Home Run, I'd be able to watch video from any modern codec like AV1 or H.266 as long as my client app supports it. If it doesn't, it's as simple as the app developer pushing out a software update to include it. Working within the constraints of 19.39 megabits per second, ATSC 1.0 is technically capable of broadcasting 8K video using versatile video coding or any future codec, and Dolby Atmos multi-channel audio using Dolby's AC4 codec or any other audio codec that supports Dolby Atmos multi-channel audio. ATSC 1.0 is also capable of loudness leveling, speech boost, and the same interactivity that ATSC 3.0 has has with Run3 TV. In fact, there is an ATSC 1.0 station currently implementing ATSC 3.0 broadcast app features. WMSN TV, a full-power ATSC 1.0 station in Madison, Wisconsin, operated by Sinclair, is sending ATSC 3.0 broadcast app functionality over an ATSC 1.0 signal. As with any code, a receiving device needs to be able to understand the code. Just like how an HEVC ATSC 1.0 broadcast requires the receiving device to know what HEVC is, the receiving device needs to know what HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files are that make make up the Run3 TV broadcast app service and how to properly render them. ATSC 3.0 devices with broadcast app support already have the capability to do this natively as this is baked within their software, which means any next-gen TV device with broadcast app functionality can render the broadcast apps. Not only that, but there is nothing stopping client apps. As I've stated before like a broken record on this YouTube channel, Devices like the HD Home Run are incredibly future-proof. The HD Home Run simply tunes and demodulates the RF waveform, extracts the binary code, and sends the code to a client device. There is nothing stopping any client apps from adding broadcast app support with ATSC 1.0 channels with a simple software update. Devices like older TVs or the MediaSonic Homeworks, for example, 
that don't receive software updates and are stuck with whatever coding was necessary according to the ATF spec will not be able to update software capabilities to conform to future coding updates. So after everything that I just said about coding, why do we even need ATSE 3.0 if ATSE 1.0 can send all of the code stuff that ATSE 3.0 can, what's even the purpose of ATSE 3.0? First, in communications, there is something known as the OSI model. The OSI model describes at every point in the chain how something is sent. So for instance, all of this coding stuff that I've just talked about is layer seven. That's the uppermost layer. Whatever is sent in that layer is pretty much irrelevant because we're still sending binary information. And the only thing that determines whether or not the connection will be established, or in this case, a receiver will be able to understand the binary code is if literally it just understands the code. That's all it needs to do. The problem is layer one is a bit more relevant and a bit more fundamental to how the technology actually works. Layer one is known as the physical layer. Now the physical layer for ATSE 1.0 is using eight vestigial sideband modulation. That modulation technique is really, really bad when it comes to multipath interference. What this means, is you can add all of the 4K channels that you can possibly fit in that 19.39 megabit per second ATSE 1.0 RF channel. You can add all of the Run 3 TV, you can add all of the immersive, anything cool that you can do with coding, you can do as much of that as you want within that 19.39 payload with ATSE 1.0, but all of the side effects of the actual underlying waveform still exist. When your TV signal breaks in and out because of a bad windstorm outside and your tree is going like this, and all of a sudden your TV picture is pixelating or just completely drops out, or if there's tropo and your SNR drops below the required 15.2 decibel SNR threshold, you will still have the TV signal drop out and disappear. There's a little bit that can be done on the coding side to make an ATSC 1.0 transmission slightly more robust, but nowhere near as meaningful as actually having modulation like QPSK or or, you know, non-uniform 16 qualm. Also with ATSE 1.0, you're stuck with one payload size. For instance, and this happens actually all the time, if a broadcaster says, you know what, I wanna send 12 megabits per second on my ATSE 1.0 RF channel. That's all I need to send is just 12 megabits per second. ATSE 1.0 is designed so that it doesn't matter if you just wanna send 12, you have to send all 19.39 megabits per second, which means what ends up happening is that remaining data capacity, that 7.39 megabits per second, let's just say in this example, would have to be sent as null packets, which is literally just a bunch of zeros. So you're wasting all of that data capacity just because the broadcaster is like, well, I'm, I'm happy. I'm sending my 12 megabits per second. I don't need any more. Now that additional data capacity is just wasted. And there's no way of ATSC 1.0 being able to shrink back its data payload to only what the broadcaster wants and then use that shrinking of payload to then increase the robustness by lowering the received SNR threshold like can be done with ATSC 3.0. So that's incredibly wasteful. You know, not being able to adjust your signal based on your needs sucks. And it leads to a very inefficient transmission. The next thing going on top of that is more things with layer one of the OSI model, things like layer division multiplexing. ATSE 1.0 is not capable of layer division multiplexing. Layer division multiplexing essentially doubles your data capacity. ATSE 1.0 is not capable of MIMO. That also doubles your data capacity. ATSE 1.0 has a very Frankensteinish way of implementing a single frequency network in which it doesn't operate anywhere near as efficiently as a single frequency network would with a physical layer like ATSE 3.0. So there's 
all of these issues at the layer one level that are just too bad to gloss over for proponents of simply using code, which is layer seven, and just calling it a day with more advanced coding. I personally believe that we should be using more advanced coding with ATSC 1.0. I'm a strong advocate for more advanced coding. K03 IMD in Eugene, Oregon. I think that is something that more broadcasters should be doing, especially right now where there are so many broadcasters that claim that there's not enough data capacity to add a new channel. There's a station in Western New York that didn't want to add MeTV tunes. They're a MeTV station and they didn't want to add MeTV tunes and all they could be doing is simply adding ABC video to make it fit and that would allow them to add additional channels uh, and possibly even more revenue streams but they're just not doing it. And at this point, especially with ABC, most devices at this point that are in circulation that are actively being used are capable of decoding AVC video. So we should definitely be moving towards that. I love the work that Weigel Weagle Broadcasting is doing with their MeTV station in Chicago by using HEVC and testing that out on an ATSC 1.0 station as well. I am without a doubt an advocate of adding more efficient coding to ATSC 1.0. And I think where that really meaningfully will have an impact in the future is with broadcasters that maybe can't afford to implement ATSC 3.0 services. If they're a small mom and pop broadcaster and they still wanna modernize their broadcast, but not go all the way out and spend that extra money with an ATSC 3.0 transmission, that could be an avenue. But in my opinion, to simply say the future is just with that layer seven, simply changing out the code, you're not realizing that that layer one still exists and it's still extremely impactful. Sticking with ATSC 1.0's waveform does nothing to help reception. So I do believe that the future of broadcast should be with a modern broadcast technology, whether that's ATSC 3.0 or 5G broadcast, it should be with a modern waveform because I don't want the future of broadcast to be every time a tree moves, my TV signal pixelates. I don't want it to be Broadcasters only have one option for robustness and they can't send more data if they want it or less data. And also in terms of Shannon limit capacity, the 8VSB implementation of ATSC 1.0 is really, really bad. And ATSC 3.0's non-uniform constellation implementation shrinks the gap to the Shannon limit, which is way more modern and allows more bits to be implemented per Hertz. And that is what we want in a modern, RF technology, in my opinion, we should not be advocating for the perpetuation of a 30-year-old RF technology with a very, very, very bad waveform. We should be moving on to ATSC 3.0. And if you're really concerned about DRM, make your voice heard with the FCC so that DRM is at least non-existent on one PLP. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.